Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction House taking a look at some of the guns that they are going to be selling in their upcoming April of 2018 Premier Firearms Auction. What we have here today is a prototype Colt 380 automatic pistol. So much of a prototype that as best I can tell it never even really got a designation. This, well, sort of. This was going to be the new Model M. Uh, and Model M was the Colt designation for what we typically call the Colt Model 1903 and Model 1908 pocket hammerless. Uh, these are the really, they're just really slick. Well, 32 and 380 caliber. Um, they're called hammerless. They actually have internal concealed hammers. They're little Colt's early pocket pistols. They are fantastic guns, and they were used for, uh, they were used by police, they were used by civilians, they were the military standard issue pistol for generals, as well as some other people. Um, they're fantastic guns. The problem is, at the end of World War II, Colt pretty much stopped making them. Uh, they did try to get development, to get production back up and running after the war, but it just didn't work. Uh, in fact, between, what, between 46 and 53, Colt shipped a grand total of 136 32 caliber pocket hammerless pistols, and I think eight 380 caliber ones. They just, there, there wasn't a whole lot of demand for them at that point. Uh, and then Colt had a number of problems internally. A lot of its tooling for those guns was worn out. You know, they'd been making them for, well, at that point, 50 years as of 1953. So they would have needed a large investment to basically rebuild the production line, and they just didn't see the, the market there to justify it. A lot of the workers who had been on those production lines uh, were older guys. They'd been working for the company for a long time, and they continued to work for Colt through the war, but at the end of the war, a lot of those guys retired and left, and so a lot of Colt's experience with that particular pistol was gone. Uh, and these things all together meant, well, a problem. So Colt's one of one of Colt's attempted solutions was to develop a new gun, a new Model M. You know, a new new year, uh, new new version of the same gun. Keep the uh, the model name that people are familiar with and the branding that people are familiar with, but a spicy new version of the gun to make people all excited. And that was going to be this. So let's take a closer look at it. Uh, this was a project that was at least seven years in the making. The first documented drawings of these showed up in 1946, and the uh, the second prototype, this is the first prototype, the second one uh, was delivered to the engineering office in 1953. I don't know how long it lasted after 53, but uh, that gives us a pretty good time frame for the project. So here's the experimental new Model M, and for comparison's sake, here is a rather nice uh, Colt 380 pocket automatic, the standard Model M. So you can see they changed a number of the profile elements. Uh, to me, this is like Colt pocket hammerless plus just a little flavor of like vector CP1. <laughs> um, and it's actually, it actually handles really nicely. It feels like a very comfortable pistol. They did make it a little bit wider. It's, I don't know how much of that you can see, but it, it just feels slightly wider. The mechanics are basically the same. Uh, it is still a simple blowback automatic. Disassembly is basically the same. We'll take this apart in just a moment. Uh, they did change the profile of the grip, so the, it has more of a a, back, a curved back strap to it now. The magazine angle changed, so the magazine for this gun, unfortunately, is missing. But if I take a standard pocket hammerless magazine and insert it in this guy, you can see that the profile of the, the bottom of the magazine is a little bit different. The body of the magazine, I'm sure, stayed the same though, because why reinvent that tooling and geometry if you don't have to? The original guns had a heel magazine release. They replaced that on this new pattern with a 1911 pattern release right there. They made the safety a lot bigger. They gave it a separate slide stop. Uh, they basically made this a little more 1911-ish, um, and that includes also bigger and better sights. So there are your new pattern sights as compared to little bitty old pattern sights that are not, not nearly as usable. They also changed the grip safety to be a bit more 1911-ish, so it only comes down halfway and it pivots at the top, where the original pocket hammerless was all the whole length of the back strap and pivoted at the bottom. 
in order to disassemble this guy, what we're going to do is pull the slide back to about here. Interestingly, the disassembly position of the slide doesn't quite line up with the slide stop. Right about there. There it is. And then you rotate the barrel about 90 degrees clockwise, and then the slide comes off the front. We have a non-captive recoil spring. Got the frame there, and then I can take the barrel, rotate it back, and take it out. A lot of this is very similar to the original pocket hammerless. Um, you can see the lugs here, that's where the barrel attaches. So when you disassemble it, what you're doing is rotating those lugs out of alignment so that it can come out, and you reassemble it, they go back in. Um, those aren't locking lugs like in the 1911, because um, this is a fixed, the, the barrel is fixed in position until you disassemble it. So it doesn't go anywhere, those grooves are just there to, to lock the barrel in that position. Concealed hammer, of course. The ejector pops up, it goes down, uh, well, so you can disassemble it. The rest of this is really pretty standard. We've got the same cutout area for the hammer to swing in, same sort of spring-loaded firing pin down in there. You've got your cutout right there, and that's, that's what you're doing when you're disassembling this thing. So you're pulling the slide back to this position, and then rotating the lugs into that cutout. Uh, so you can take the slide off, and then rotate them back and pull the barrel out. That's about it. Everything else here is pretty much the same. They didn't change the core mechanics, they just changed the styling and a few of the, the outside control and uh, user interface elements. There is only one marking on here, and that is this serial number, GX2501-1. The GX is gun, comma, experimental, and I believe 2501 was the project number uh, for this project at Colt, uh, because the second prototype that was made had the serial number GX2501-2. Well, the release of the new gun didn't really work so well, uh, having, having made a grand total of only three, and only as experimental guns. Um, Colt would drop the 380 automatic pistols for quite some time. Uh, the next attempt they made to have them was actually in partnership with Star in Spain. They basically rebranded Star's model DK, which was a pocket size concealable 380 1911 style automatic pistol. They rebranded that as the Colt Pony. That really didn't work well. It ended up being taken over by Ivor Johnson, and you know, Colt has had various models of 380 auto automatic pistols on and off of their, well, in and out of their catalog ever since. But this, to me, is honestly one of the best handling of the bunch, without having actually done any shooting of it. So, uh, and as a one of three experimental, it's a pretty darn cool gun to have. If you'd like to have it yourself, it is of course coming up for sale here at Rock Island. Take a look at the description text below, you'll find a link to their catalog page with their pictures, their description, their price estimate, and everything else you would want to know about it. Place a bid either here live at the auction or online through their website. Thanks for watching.